And um, I'm ready to paint a little bit. How about y'all? I'm ready to do a little painting. My name's Auburn. My friends call me Burn. I'm from Burn Studio here in Amarillo, Texas. And I am excited to teach you guys a little bit about some painting today. <laughs> And so we're going to do a variety of things uh, with branches in springtime. But before I even dive into that, because I am ready just to dive into some painting. That took a little bit of my life off of me just doing that technology. <laughs> my son's giggling over there because he agrees. I'm not like, whew, but I still feel like I'm a little crooked here for you guys on this side. So if I attempt to move it, I might mess it up. See some people wait to see me. No, I shouldn't even touch it. Okay, I'm not gonna touch it anymore. I'm learning. Anyway, but one thing I um, can teach you to learn is a little bit about some painting. So before we start, I want to do a little bit of a uh, check on your materials. So I told you guys I really don't care what kind of stuff you have today because we're all in this together. Where we might only have to select a little bit of this odds and ends, and that's fine. You know, so whatever you have will work for what I'm going to teach you with our workshop today. I have a variety of Artist Loves paint from Michaels, which they still do the curbside pickup, which is great. I did it today. You know, you can call in. Sometimes they're a little bit busy, but, you know, they're really nice there. You can go and get your stuff picked up. It'll work out just fine. Um, otherwise, I'm fine with you having primary colors red, blue, and yellow, because you can use those to make any color, as well as white and black. So that can make tints or shades, no matter which direction you want to go. So I pulled out a couple, a variety of some different paintings I have here. I still feel like I need to turn it. So it has it on uh, YouTube. Can I see it pretty well? Uh, yes. But if I turn it like this from my Facebookers, can they still see it there? Awesome. I'm going to scoot my chair over for the 500th time today. <laughs> okay, so I have more of a Van Gogh inspired almond branch painting right here. I'm going to be doing a mixture of all three of these and kind of showing you guys variety. So when Van Gogh, everything is a lot of movement flow. I'm going to be showing that. Um, we don't have a lot of almond branch trees around here. Uh, I believe we have more of the Bradford pears. Um, as well as we don't have a lot of cherry blossoms, or it, honestly, even trees in general <laughs> around here in Amarillo. But that's okay because I still love these. They're my favorite. I used to have these painted in my daughter's nursery. Um, this one is more of a zoom in. If you want, if you want to feel like a zoom in of a certain blossom, and this one's a far away with more of the white globby, and these are the messy. So if you're like, oh my, I don't even know. She's showing a variety. Well, yes, I am going to teach you a variety today. But the main things you need to be thinking about is what colors do you want to use, okay? I'm going to go with more of a blue background. So if I told you earlier, if you only have the primaries, just go with blue and white. You could do a variety with that. Add a little bit of purple. That'll work great, too. I have some light blue already on over here. Now, when it comes, I'm not super fancy, you know, I do have this little fancy thing today, but I also have a paper plate, which is usually what I use when I'm painting. So, I did get this artist block, but I'm going to just come in with some light blue, again, blue plus white. You can do straight blue. And when I'm pouring my paint, I just like to do like little dots to start with. So, a couple things, I was a little scattered when I started. I'm pour my paint here. When you guys are coming in and watching me do these videos, because I feel get better after this one, I promise. Um, but when you're watching me, I'm a very fast painter. So I'm going to keep painting quickly so the video doesn't last, you know, two and a half hours. Um, so pause me at certain times. And I'm going to tell you, be like, okay, now's a good time to do a little bit of a pause, you know. And we'll start coming in. So again, mostly just blues on my palette to begin with. And I'm just gonna dive in with some fun in the background. So if I keep going off, I know I have YouTube and that going right here. So back to other materials. I'm just gonna start with my sky colors to begin with. Now let's say you're not a big fan of blues and you wanna do all purples. Heck, 
if you want to do reds in your background, do reds. I just want you to stick with the main color and then come in with tints and shades from that color. So for instance, you have a blue, a tint of a blue is a little bit of white, shade, a little bit of black. You just have some fun. Dive in the background however you want. So right there, essentially, I have a straight blue and I have black blue. And then I actually have a little bit of a turquoise. But I could add a darker blue if I wanted to. So I'll go ahead and add that. And I could do that with black or if you have it straight on the tube, whatever you need to. All right, so back to materials. I got my paper towels. Woohoo! These are very fancy right now. If you need to recycle them, you can. <laughs> and then I have a variety of brushes. I like to have a good large flat brush. It doesn't have to be very large, you know, anywhere in this variety. A medium sized flat brush. And then a small flat brush or a small round brush. Any of that will work right there. Oh. <laughs> so it's also my crew when I drop things, I'll pick them up for me. Correct. <laughs> yeah, say it on the YouTube channel, I think they're good to see. Yeah, you can see the whole thing. Okay, good deal. Mm -hmm. Me too. I feel like I'm kind of looking over here and I'm a little bit speeded, but that's all right. All right, with any painting, I really like to come on, and again, we're doing acrylic paints today. So acrylic paints are water-based, so water makes it go down well. When we're coming down here, I just have to add in a little bit of water all over my canvas to begin with. I've done this in a lot of my classes at the Benefit Studio before. It really just helps to blend the colors when we get started. All over, very lightly. Now, some of you might get a little bit excited, and you're like, "Woo! Water everywhere!" Hey, might as well. We can have us a party at home today, right? Okay. Next, I am going to come in with my blues. I'm going to start with my major blue. I just really get a little bit on the tips of my blue like that. I'll pat them both on both sides. Like I said, guys, anytime you want to pause, if you're like, okay, hold on, especially if you're working with little ones, um, you can pause me at any time and then keep coming back and catch up because I'm going to keep going through to try to get this video to around an hour. So you'll be able to see that. Now, when I come in and dive in with my blue, I do like to kind of think about where is the light coming from? Oh, okay, of course, you can have light. It can come from above the corner or the center. So that's your choice. I want to push you to make your own decisions here. So I'm going to have my light hmm, I'm come from right around here. So in these other areas, when I start laying it in, I'm just going to start flowing back and forth in a little X motion. Lots of flowing. Now, the main things I'm wanting to teach you guys today is about flow and movement and sky and in background. So when I start adding in more paint, then I can also come in with a little bit more water. Blow it in some more. Now if you have a little bit bigger brush or a smaller canvas, this would even move a little bit faster. I'm about to go in fast forward mode. So this is where I can come in with a couple blues. Now I'm going to work a little faster. Now, if you're at home, I suggest not going fast forward motion. Just enjoy it. Just have you some fun at your painting. Now, I'm super excited to be painting with you guys at home. I think this is a lot of fun and something unique. We're definitely a strange little time, but we're going to find some beauty in the world today. Even though we might not have a lot of trees and branches out here in old West Texas, we're going to paint some. <laughs> so I'm coming in quite a bit with a variety of those blues. And I, like I said, I always like to come in with a little bit of a variety of blues, but if you only have the one, it doesn't matter. And doing back and forth motions of X's 
you have a lot of time, I would come really dive in. I'll try to move this up here for you guys. I'll try to really dive in some more with some of those strokes. Now, once I start getting closer to my light area, which I said was going to be here in this area right there, once I start moving towards that area, I am going to get a little bit lighter with my colors. Now, you can do that in one of two ways. You can add light with acrylic paint by adding more water, which will create a watercolor effect, which is a little bit lighter and looser. Or, who wants to guess it, Anybody out there, how else can you add lightness to your blue? Oh, Slade said it. What? Light. So I need to come in and add a little bit of some white. Now, any white will do. If you're a little bit more of an advanced painter and you're joining me, I really want to push you to start diving in a little bit more with your whites and your variety of tones you get here. Now, I know most of all of us um, that are joining in today are probably beginners, but I definitely do know I've had a few people that have been painting with me for a while that were joining today. And if that is you, then I want you to really try to get this background lighter, pulsating light. It's a little bit darker. Now, the one thing I'll tell you guys, and y'all that have been to the studio know this about me. One thing that kills me a little bit about having a, this here is, I can't have my music. I don't like my music. I like to go oops, oops, and play the music right now. And that's all what I have going on. So, if you are not doing a straight up blue shade of a background, you could be doing another color. Regardless, you're still going to be doing tints and shades. Now, if I got any littles joining me, I want you to really have fun here. Stick with the light, move out to the dark, have fun because we're about to do a little bit more texture into this background. Now, I do have a few little white spots. Again, I'm working on a 16 by 20 canvas. I probably should have chose a little bit smaller today. Because I'm a little squished in here. I'll get all those kinks worked out. But I almost have the entire canvas covered. And this is where you can come in and have more fun. Okay. So, more colors. Good think about that. What else do I want to add? Do I want to add a little bit of some greens? A little bit of some turquoise? Bronze? Gold? Oh my! You definitely could. You could come in here with that. Why not? I mean, it'd be fun. Everything about paint is about exploring and finding what really you find that you like. Now, you might do something that you're like, ooh, I should not have done that. If that's the case, get your little napkin or towel and get a little water and wipe it away. No worries. It's one of my biggest rules at the studio is no worries. Okay, try to just have fun. So, for instance, I wanted to come in here as kind of a bland little background. I could add a couple things. Oh, no, Slade, one of my colors fell on the ground. It's okay. <gasps> one of my favorites. I could come in with some other colors, like a green. Let me see if I can reach this one. So we can grab it. I can reach it. So the color that I'm thinking about adding, I actually have a lot in this painting. And that's that little dirty little purple. So right now our texture has all been these X motions that we're doing in the background. But you can also do this squiggly motion, which is really fun. You see it over there? Way to go, MacGyver. Thank you. Now if you want to go more, if you're a big turquoise fan, you want to go more turquoise, add in some more of that turquoise. But Light blue violet. Yes, very fun. Lipotex there, but I, you know, again, a lot of the other things I have a straight up light violet from Artist Law, but it's a little bit more pinkish. You can still add in, like I said, go forth and conquer. So when I add in, it's still wet, 
Got to work a little quick here. So let's say you had to go on a little bathroom break or you had to go get a little snack and you're working on this. Spray your canvas or add a little bit more water when you come back in. Now, if you waited too long and you start coming in with that water, it's going to pull that background. Don't worry about that. Next layer, lay it in thick. That's all you got to do. So now, oh, now I'm getting a little bit of a halo effect around that area. So I'm still kind of blowing in the colors in that area. I talked uh, shortly about how you can do the texture and the smoothness of the sky with little X's or zigzags or V's, but you definitely can do some squiggles too. So I'm gonna be showing a little bit of squiggles very shortly. I especially know my kiddos like the squiggle technique. So every time I'm reapplying the paint, I'm adding quite a bit. You can see that. A little bit, every time. My corners coming around. So once I've done that, now I have a light, a light blue, a purple light blue. And now I'm gonna start coming in with a little bit more regular blue around the corners. It just builds and builds and builds. Oh, I need more paint and more. Now, if you start noticing a dry brush, a dry brush, I'll show you here, that is a dry brush, okay? So, get a little bit of water. Ah, now, then you add a little bit more there. So, I am streaming on two devices right now. So, if I start looking at one more than the other, I'm not too crazy. Just maybe a little bit crazy. All right, I'm almost done. I think I need a little bit more blue. And then I kind of want to just throw in some darkness. Why not throw a little bit of darkness? When I say that, I'm going to get a little, little bit of black. A little bit of black, y'all. Because a lot of people get so excited, they're like, oh, I want mine to be very dark on the outside. I'm telling you, a little bit. I heard something like a big noise. Will you check my YouTube? Yeah, it's good. Okay. I'll double check it. Cameraman. All right, so there you can see. When I come in these outside corners, again, this is my main light that I'm having. Now, remember what I said earlier. Your main light can be anywhere. You choose your light, y'all. It can be above. It can be in this area. It could be a sunset. I mean, you totally could do anything with the branches in the sunset version as well. All right. I think I'm almost done with my background. So then I want to talk about how if you're really not feeling the smoothness of that and you wanted to come in and do just a little bit of the squiggle motion so kids you could come in with this on top of paint once it dries with oil pastels crayons and just that you want to stick with colors that are friends purple or blue so you can come in with any of those colors and squiggle all in your background you could also do that with paint if you have the paint with you but I'm going to switch down to my medium sized brush for this time. So then, if I want to do a little bit of squiggles, just like I said, turning my wrist, coming in there. And it is kind of fun because it does make a little bit of a nest like feel. Oh, I got a little bit of purple into my light blue. Good, that makes it fun. Have a little bit of colors come everywhere. So play with it. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Play with it. We have a lot of time right now. We have time to play, well, somewhat, <laughs> and do some fun things. But it is more fun to play with paint. So now you can see, I got, I could work totally on building up that scribbling technique. These are all shading techniques you can do with drawing too. This is more of a hatching and a blending. 
and a scribbling. So you can keep going one direction or the other and decide what really suits you more, okay? So for me, for quickness of time, I'm gonna just stick with the blending because I've already done most of that. So I'm gonna just come back in, like I said, play. You can come back in and smooth it out. Acrylic paint is very forgiving. Unlike me and my teaching today. Oh! <laughs> Shout out to all the teachers out there, by the way. Okay. All right. So now it's time to talk about branches. Yes, we're going to do branches. We're going to have them come in. And now you're going to have yet again more choices. I know I'm a person of choices. I can't help it. Uh, you can have a zoom in branch, which doesn't necessarily mean it has to be large and in charge. It can still be skinny. And I'm going to show you how to do skinny branches. Suck it in, ladies. Um, but um, you can put a little bit bigger, but the skinnier ones are great for zooming in if you want to have big, bold blossoms like here. But then some of you might want to stick with the more messy. If you're like, ooh, I like that scribbling. I want to do more scribbling. You can see in this one, especially for my painters that have painted before, if you really want to dive in more, you could do, I would honestly probably do a whole nother round. I would pause me right now and be like, mm. I would do a whole nother round of lights, mediums, and darks, and then play a little bit. You see, I even added a few of uh, kind of tans in the background of this one. But play with that. Two coats, maybe three coats in the background. Build it up and build it up. The more you have time, do it. So pause me, fiddle with your background for as long as you want, and then come back. Now, on this one, there's quite a bit of branches. And um, they're more, again, I'm going to zoom it up a little bit there so you guys can see. Oh. I think I'm way too high for them the whole time. Yeah. Um, but in general, you can see how they're a little bit more squiggly and everything is smudged out. Finger painting, that's where that comes in. And then on these branches, they are more smooth. So they come across, but then the blossoms are kind of just like blobs. Now, if you are painting again at home and you just happen to have a bunch of stuff that maybe you got an art kit and you're like, oh, I can look this. Maybe something like a palette knife. You can come in and smudge in some paint with those and also use a texture medium, um, like a gesso or I mean, any kind of medium paste will work. And making these just a little bit thicker, especially if you tend to do your branches and have a little bit of a heavy hand and the ends are like, whoa, the branches look more like a base of a tree. Well, that could be a little way you can fix that. And I'm going to show you some more with that as well. Okay. So the main thing when I get to my branches, do you want to have black branches? Do you want to have brown branches? Do you want to have a very dark navy blue branch? It's up to you. I'm going to go with a little bit of black and blue. I mean black and brown. <laughs> I'm not black and blue. You could even, if you had like a red background, you could come in with some coppers and golds. That would be fun. So I get about a uh, quarter size amount of paint. Not as much black as I did brown. Ooh, I did have some gold. Shall I? There you see. That's what I've got going on right there. Okay, so when I decide about my branches, first of all, your first decision is, are you going to go big or are you going to go small? Um, do you want a lot of branches or little branches? Do you want to leave space for birds, butterflies? I mean, I know, I'm a person of options. If you're like, I don't know, Aubrey, just tell me what to do. Okay, just follow along with me and I'll tell you what to do. <laughs> so I'm going to dive down to a small round brush. And I know, I think I'm going to do maybe three branches. I'm going to have one that's a little bit bigger that if I decide I want to have a bird on it later or if I decide I want to have a big blossom on it, I can. 
And I'm going to have it roll from this side all the way across. And I think I've got one pin down, maybe here. Oh, maybe one more. I like an odd number, though, so we'll just see what happens. So when I'm mixing my brush color, which is brown, with some black together, I like to make a nice little inky base. Let's do that there. Okay, so there is a nice little inky brown color. And now I'm going to have my base branch start right here. And what I like to do is now I'm going to go here, to maybe, and one little area, let's say boom. So now I'm, now I'm going from A to B. Then I like to even do what I call making a TV. So that's where it's a little bit skinny. Now, a lot of people are like, A to B, that's a straight line. I'm going to get out my ruler. No, it's not math class. We're not class, y'all. So we got to let it be a little wobbly. So to get your branches a little bit wobbly, hold it really loose a little bit further on the end. And another thing you can do is roll it. And then throw your thumb and your middle finger and your thumb and your forefinger. So now I'm going over there and then I just hold my breath and I dive in. Okay, so now I have a nice start of one branch. And that's the key because from there, we're going to have an explosion. <laughs> so I have my one little branch. And then I'm going to make it a little bit bigger at the bottom. Right there. It doesn't have to be perfect. A lot of times people get really worked up about their branches. They're like, it needs to be so straight and solid. Who cares? Let that go. We're there to have fun. I have another one come out here. Now, one thing you might notice is that when I'm painting, I am pulling the paint. I am not pushing it as I go. That's a big thing. A lot of times people would want to come in with a branch, no matter which way, even if I was turning more like this direction, they want to push from the end down. You know, you want to come from here and then pull it towards you. So now I've got a couple little nice branches. I said I wasn't going to have one here, but I'm kind of filling in. I'm going with it. Little branch. I want to definitely have a branch. I'm going to come maybe this direction. Oh no, the branches intersect. Branches do, y'all. I have people paint and they're always like, oh no, the branches can't touch. Yes, they can. They do in real life. Even though know, we may not have seen a lot of trees lately. Now, let's say something happens and you're painting a branch and you're like, oh, no, I hate that branch. Well, luckily, you've been pausing me in between. And if your background is dry, then you'll wipe it away and then just walk away. No words. Now, sometimes you'll have to come in there and maybe redo some of your background. But just do, don't try to cover it up with paint first. Go ahead and come in with a little bit of a wet napkin and water. All right, I'm getting a little crazy with my branches, but I'm having fun, so. That's all the math, girls. So I think my um, hand is back up over here. Yeah. Yeah. Although I do think I haven't even have one here. I just set it up right there. I'm going to do one. Thank you, lovely assistant. Not that one, yes. Right Thank you. <laughs> All right, so there I kind of come with quite a variety of branches. <laughs> now, if I, like I said earlier, if I had wanted to do just one pure skinny branch, for instance, would have still done the same thing. I would have started from one end to the other, and then this one I have wobbled up. Real skinny line. Okay. This one was still the same. I just kind of left some little breaks and branches for the big blossoms that you could have coming in. Okay, so you could, and then you also notice I 
had the little nods and then we have the little buds and flowers to do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add just a few of those little buds that I was talking about. And then add a little bit of gold to my paint. If you don't have gold, you can do some yellow and white for this part as well. And you can just come on top of your branches. This is my light, okay? So if my light is here, the branches in general should just be a little bit lighter either on the top or that would be behind. But let's just go with on the top here. And I can do that with gold and white and yellow. I love that one, right? That's doing good today. Whoa, that's good to be painting. Okay, see that little lightness that hits there on that branch? It definitely makes it pop. Then if I wanted to add just like a little bud for a flower that would come out, i will just push it. Just a little push in some areas. And now I can add some more. Again, we'll I'm to smudge it a little bit. Nothing about this has to be fancy, but smudge it. Sometimes I like to get more messy when I'm painting. It doesn't have to be perfect. So working on your line. Now let's say you happen to have a lot of light. Like, whoa, that's way too many lights. And then you can always come back in and add a few darks on the top. Remember, we do want our branches to be a little bit heavier towards the base. Now, I would love for you guys to tell me in your comments any particular paintings that I've done either at the studio or in general, that you would like to see. I'd be more than happy to show them. Um, if you want me more of even, so for kids, for instance, you know, I am getting more into the detailed parts of this, but um, you could definitely still do some highlights on the branches as you come in here. Now, the brush is getting a little bit dry. Water. Mm, so is my voice. Okay, so now we're at the point where, again, you could pause me some more and keep working on this. And um, I would probably keep fiddling some more and adding in some more darks, adding in some more lights, uh, you know, adding in some little tiny branches like I just did right there. And the depth so play. Let yourself keep playing for a while. And if you have specific questions, and you're like, oh, I don't know, should I do a little bit more? Well, just call her at me. She me a little message. I'm around. And I would be more than happy to help you with some of that. Now, let's say here soon, I'm going to be doing more, and you've run out of supplies and cannot get any. I am working on a subscription kits, and I can help you with that as well. Trying to keep them as affordable as possible. Okay. I mean, really, you could fiddle forever, right? And little bitty branches. I don't feel like I need to have a little bit more. Another thing is, I always say, which I'm not going to do that because I might knock something over and then our <laughs> session might be over. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, stand up and step back and stretch. Pause me, stand up, step back, stretch. Look and see, what else should I add? Do I need to add some more branches? Do I need to have some of these branches a little bit bigger? If so, go ahead and work on that. Now, pretend like I'm pausing. Instead, I'm going to be cleaning my brushes and beginning the next session, which is our blossoms. So... I love blossoming trees. They're so pretty. There's so many colors. So you need to decide. Are you going to stick with all white? White with a little bit of pink? White with a lot of pink and some peach? 
So at the beginning, I, I said, I really don't care what kind of paint you get, and I really don't. I mean, we're just expressing ourselves and trying to have some fun. So don't dive it out there and be like, oh, so for instance, I found this flesh tone and a little craft paint out. It's acrylic. And I found it out in my bar. I'm going to totally use that and add that, a little bit of that to my uh, flowers. You can also use, this is pure pink. Come in and use with a lot of light. Unless you want to go really bold with your flowers. And if you want to go bold, go bold. Go big, go bold, right? You could even come in with some more purple, or you could come in with some more metallics, whites. I get a lot of white on my plate. If you happen to have a palette knife, you could definitely come in. I'll have a class all on palette knives later. But right now, mostly about this. So when I start coming in with my little blossoms, a lot of time people tend to overthink them just a tiny bit. So first things first, I want to make sure that um, I have a small flat or a round brush clean. So let me clean mine just a little bit more. Oh, Got any family out there watching today? Okay. All right. So when I start coming in with my blossoms, um, again, I'm not going to overthink it. This is the first thing I see people do when they come in with flowers. Okay. Let's see them do this. You know, I'm not saying that's bad. I kind of like it. They're kind of delicate and kind of sweet. But I want you to mess it in that just a little bit. Okay? You can come in and do a little scrubby, scrubby do of a white blossom. We'll leave them be and then move on. Then sometimes I have people that start painting a really large blossom. Now, that would work if you're doing a zoom in. So I'm back to this. So if I wanted to have a zoom in flower, I'm going to switch it over here. And I'm going to show that. It's like we see if the, everybody can see here. You can kind of see it. It's a little bit wide, but they can kind of see it. I mean, but can you see it from here? Yeah, it's just a white. Okay. So if you want to do a giant zoom in of a flower, you're going to go ahead and draw it, just like how you would normally think with the little rounded petals. Okay? And then you can start gradually filling it in with some darker colors towards the center. I'm just doing a few. And then I'll pull it up real close. Of course, my center will be dark. Again, I was upside down there. But... I get the gist of it a wee bit. Just a wee bit. Now I have blossoms all over. You know, but you would start gradually going in with the base color of your pinks, layering in some lights and some darks, blending it. Again, I need to blend with my finger in the dark center and holding in some more shades. So I'm going to pause it on. You will. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. some of those colors so we can kind of see it quick. And now I'm going to move back to my messy blossoms. So they're messy. Let me just them up. So I'm starting with some white, like I did here. I've already got some paint on my face. And some of you can just have a little bud. A little bud, maybe a couple. Smush it. Sometimes I like to just smush it. I feel like today is the day I can just smush that paint in there. Now that's a lot of some pinks on that side. Then I could come in with some more whites and I can start making them bigger. So I'm kind of doing this little motion like turning my wrist and rotating it different directions. 
Drag me down. All over, just to begin with, rotating, rotating. So I'm working with mostly white, pale pink, all around now. Like I said, you want to have a couple biggie, biggie blossoms, have a couple. Oh no, I got some brown, my branch in there. Let it happen, it's kind of cool. Now I'm going to grab that darkness and I'm going to bring it over here to some of these others. That's what Bob Ross would call a happy little accident right there. That looks even better, doesn't it? And we actually got that from Picasso. He used to do some of that. He would do happy little accidents. Crazy good. He was, see, how fun is that? I'm just smushing that around. Kind of almost like pitter patter. Boop, boop. And rotate my wrist around for those blossoms. Some could just be buds. Don't forget about the little buds. Fill that in. Take the time with it. I was worried. Sometimes I tend to, when I get excited, I tend to start playing a little bit. All right, so there come more of the little happy little blossoms. Now, this is another thing that you can fiddle with for quite a while. I'm going to kind of do a quick fast forward um, that you guys could really play with these blossoms. You could keep pushing them. Now, again, like if you want to do the, you want to start all of a sudden as you're painting and you're like, I want to make them bigger. I want to make these blossoms. I'm going to come in and add more of that value and that dark center, like an open blossom. Then keep working on that. You know, start filling in. It's going to be a dark. Just always remember, where is your light? Where is your light coming from? Find your light and then do some of those dark outlines. If you are thinking you want, you know what? I'm going to go crazy and I'm going to go with texture. You maybe have some of that modeling paste and you want to come in here. Oh, no, I've got a puncture on my canvas. That's good. And you can layer in just globs of paint on top and that would be fun. If you want to go a little bit more Van Gogh's. We're kind of doing it, like I said, a mix of all of them. So I'm really been focusing right now on just globbing in some of those colors. You can add in some yellow. I love the good old Naples yellow. That's one of my favorites for yellow ochre. And that you could come in with a little bit of dark centers. Now, one thing I would say is don't try to get yourself where sometimes people start getting these flowers and they feel like they need to have every single one have a center. Center. You're thinking about it, weren't you? Yeah, you're like, oh, oh, that's me. And you start having every single one. It's like, da, 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 da. don't do that. You know, flowers aren't perfect, just like we are. So let them bloom for the beautifulness that they are. And let them flow out there. And like I said, don't be afraid to even finger paint a little bit. Have a little bit of some squiggles in there. And then when you do start coming in with your darkness, just have a little bit. See that? Just a little bit can go a long way in those blossoms. Uh, I like that one. So, woo, that one, that one had a lot of darkness. Woo! So, happy little accident. Maybe not. Maybe I need to make some of that to go away. Paint it away, or come back in with the Things happen. So this is where you might need to again pause on me, or you keep fiddling. I'm gonna probably just keep going with some more of my ideas instead of completely even finishing that painting. But it's getting there anyway. You really want to make sure you get all those little 
So what I would like to do to really get mine finished, because I am feeling about getting a little bit more loose. I'm going to like stretch it out a little bit. Like, oh. And earlier we kind of talked about some of those squiggles and stuff like that. I'm going to do a little bit more of that in my opinion. Now you might be wanting to go more of a certain direction that you're already going. Let's stick with that. So the main thing I'm going to focus with before I move on to that part is highlights and shadows in my flowers. Do I have like a little bit of like boom? Right. Move on. Do I need to smudge a little bit? I want to mess it up a little bit. Sure, I can do that. Did I get a little too much messy? Oh, now it's on my bark. Oh, I like it. I'm gonna leave it. Okay. Have fun with it. If your flower blossoms end up looking like more specific blossoms, like my first one in there, it's fine. The main thing is, are you letting it go? Are you having some fun? Do you feel like maybe you want to add a little bit of some gold? I don't know what I'm going to do. Into my blossoms. That sounds fun, right? Okay, now I've gotten all my highlights in there almost. Got a little bit more. You notice how this time when I'm coming in, I'm kind of glooping in the paint. I mean, I don't like to waste paint, so I'm not thinking none of this paint needs to be left behind. So I'm layering it in fairly thick. that bolder pink in there. I wasn't planning on it, but see, that's what sometimes you might have your best little plan and then all of a sudden you start painting and you're like, I kind of like it. I definitely wasn't planning on putting that much pink in there, but now I'm going with it. Nice thing, like I said earlier about acrylic painting, is if you do something you're like, oh, maybe that's a little bit too much pink. But it was changing. It dries. You can paint over top of it. It's like a redo. No, I'll have just a little bit of a review. Okay, highlights, colors, and I said again, you might have already done this, coming in with just a little bit of some darkness. I'm actually going to switch to my round brush because that flat small brush is getting a little. And here, you could even, if you wanted to, if you're doing, you wanted to outline some of those petals a little bit, you could. I'm going to start getting a little bit more fancy. Or a little bit smudgy. I'm a smudgy fan myself. Mostly because I feel like I don't ever want to work on tiny little details. So y'all remember earlier when I talked about scribbling? That's kind of how I feel like I do the low lights in my blossoms. Scribble them. Yeah. I'm gonna, ooh! Too much. I'm running a little darkness. Slightly check my own, make sure everything's working. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> well, I could matter if it's not, right? <laughs> We're almost there. All right, so. There go those my branches. Now, this is where, like I said earlier, I was talking to the point where you want to have a choice. Do you want to come in and messy up your background a little bit more? You could. Um, you could come in here very easily with some fun. This again is for older people. Or more just painters have been around and you want to come in and you want to messy up around your branches. Oh, I got a little bit of brown in here. See that kind of builds up a little bit and it adds another layer. This is a just if you want to try it and play around, especially if you're like, I feel like it just needs a little something. You do this with any of the background shades that you already have. Any of those blues, purpley blues, whatever, or if you did the reds, reds of browns, any of that. And there's some fun. Oh, I forgot. Oh gosh. Yep, I'll do that same. 
So like here, this is what I'm talking about. Let's smudgy that up a little bit. Oh, I got some of my flower. Now, this is just if you want to. You can kind of come in and smudge it up a little bit. And then I would come in with some more water. And you can even let it drizzle. Let it drizzle on purpose. Why not? Let that happen. Look how fun that is. Oh, I'm going to do another drizzle because I was digging that. Yep. Mm hmm. And if it drizzles onto my tree, I can let it drizzle all the way through and come in and bop it away. I'm going to do a little bit more of that funness in the background just because I feel like I need to add just something. Now again, if you're not a big drizzle fan, you know, definitely don't have to let it drizzle. And you can always pull the drizzles away and it will also add another little bit of a texture and let that drizzle on top. I've done some painting before where I even let the blossoms drizzle themselves, which is pretty fun. Uh-oh, oh, it oh, knocked down. I was supposed to be doing this at the studio today, and that was another part of why things didn't quite work out. But hey, we're all in now and I'm super happy. I hope you guys are feeling some more relaxation like I am. I'm definitely feeling the happiness. So you see here when I'm even doing that scribbling, I can even come underneath. Oh, it just seems like it adds a little something. Now, if you started out with scribbles, you could come in with more. What if you're like, I'm not really not kind of a fan of that? You want to just keep it blended. Do that. Uh oh. Got a little bit of darkness there. And the bird is moving. Alright, just add some blue. And that's a lot of water, blue, wipes it away. And that will make even more of a shade than you need there. And then again, you could pause me, fiddle forever, and add more to that. I'm kind of like I said, doing a little speed motion here. Um, other things that you can add at this stage. I saw that just a second ago. I was like, ooh. I want a little bit of more gold. <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit of some gold in the center. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see that up close? See that kind of popping it right there? I like a little nice little gold. So I was, uh, told my kids, they're like, what are you going to paint? I was like, I'm going to do a blossom. They're like, what's painting? I was like, it's kind of a mixture of all of these. <laughs> and they're like, but you want to paint it again? I was like, I'm fit. Sometimes you just got to dive in and explore as you go. That's what you guys are doing today, right? So, I'll tell you. I'm doing this in a lot of classes, but I'm super glad to be happy to be painting with all of you. Oh, yeah. That little bit of yellow gold is really popping in. And I even think, you know, it might be fun to do a little bit of gold in the background. But I won't keep fiddling because I'll let you guys mess with all the fiddling there. But I'm definitely liking those gold centers. So, there's some other options if you wanted to add more. What else could you add? Well, I actually woke up super duper early this morning thinking about other things you could do to add to this painting. And, and there's so many things you can add. Um, I'm not sure if I have time for all of that. Uh, can you just stir? <laughs> I think I'm about an hour in. This YouTube video is 58 minutes. Okay, good. So let's kind of keep it at an hour. Um, so a few things that you could add to these that are really fun. Obviously, some birds would be really sweet. You know, coming in with some little, you know, little bird silhouettes. I'm going to show real quick. It could be a silhouette or it could be a real bird. It could come in there. Um, a butterfly. So here's my 
you know, silhouettes. Anytime you're doing a silhouette of animals, just really think about doing a shape. An oval, circle, almost like a figure eight here. A little skinny triangle. A little beak at the break, beak right there. You could come in and do and move it and practice sketching those first before you do those on the canvas. Um, you might not want anything. Or you might want to come in with like your metallic um, sharpie and write some words, you know, something that's in the background. You could uh, leave it, you know, like this one. And you can definitely tell, like this one had a lot more coverage in the background. You know, that one was about an hour. This one was a little bit faster. But this one had a little bit more muted and shades and colors. And that's just by mixing the colors more. And if you didn't go zoom in, but you can also come in with a butterfly. Butterflies are really fun. And I had even thought how oh, it would be so easy to do any kind of a cherry blossom branch and then maybe come in with a, a little bird feeder, a bird house. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up today. I think that's everything that I have. Now, if you have done everything and you follow along with me, I would love to see your painting. Um, and if you have any questions, share with me as well. You can post your pictures. I think you can even post on comments. I'm still learning about stuff with YouTube. Um, but you can definitely post on my Facebook page. Let's see if you painted along with me. As always, you need to sign in because it's your painting. You did it. And I hope I brought a little bit of joy today to you guys and shine your light just a little bit. I know things have been weird all around, so I hope you guys have maybe had a little bit of laugh in my expense, especially at the beginning of my <laughs> videos. But hey, I made it through my first live video on two at the same time, so I feel like that's pretty good. And I look forward to doing more. I'm planning on doing uh, another painting, maybe here in a few days, and I'm deciding between a few. I'll probably come on and see what you guys would like to do. Um, if we want to do something more Easter or keep going with spring, we'll think about that some more. I have to be in mind so I'm those days and see what, what happens from that. But like I said, I hope you guys had fun. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions for me, let me know. And again, be kind, be good, find your light and your jewel. Thanks, guys.